Thank you for coming. Um, I think we'll start, even though I, several people have still to arrive, so we will have perhaps a few coming in during the talk. Apologize in advance for that. Um, tonight's talk is relating to the exhibition by Issa Sam, and we have Issa Sam here tonight to talk about his work. Uh, we also have Jean-Michel Bruyer, who's an artist and uh, founding uh, director of a collective called La Fabrique in Marseille. And we have Koyo Kyo, Koyo, who is the uh, curator of the exhibition and also director of the space Rural Material in Dakar, and indeed an international curator. And we're very grateful that uh, she's brought this wonderful exhibition here. And also Charlotte. Sorry, I have to refer to my notes. Sa Sedius, who's uh, going to be translating tonight for us. So thank you all and welcome. Thank you, Grant. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, thanks to uh, Iniva and uh, to uh, the invitation to uh, to make an exhib uh, to make uh, an exhibition of uh, Issa Sam here. It's uh, it's a great pleasure for us to uh, to collaborate together. Isa and I uh, all the time, but particularly this time to be presenting a, a solo show of Isa Sam in London because for it has London has a very uh, emotional uh, relationship, uh, or Isa has a very emotional relationship with London, having participated to. Uh, this uh, great project in 95, organized by various people. And uh, it was, uh, but back then, Isa came here in the context of Laboratoire Agita and uh, many other artists and musicians and playwrights and so on. So coming back almost 20 years later, as a, as a solo artist, which he's actually not, and actually he, he, he doesn't even present himself as an artist all the time, uh, it, is, uh, it is really uh, important. What is also very particular for this, uh, for this exhibition is, uh, is the invitation that I extended to uh, Jean-Michel Brouillet, who is here, French artist and uh, multiple forms, and uh, who accepted um, generously to participate in the show. And I, I, I think I can never say it enough, is that it's the very, very first time that uh, the works of Jean-Michel, in which Issa plays a very important role, are presented outside the context this is a bit sounding, no? Mm -hmm. Outside the context of, uh, of Jean-Michel's own uh, productions and durational performances. So it is a unique experience to, to have these, uh, these works presented together here at INIVA. Um, I, I will read a little bit. I think uh, mo many of you who are here are f sort of familiar uh, with uh, Issa Sam's work. I will read a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of a text to give a, a kind of a, a brief introduction uh, into his work. And, uh, and then I will hand over uh, to Jean-Michel, even though we are both here <coughs> for Issa, and uh, Jean-Michel doesn't really want to be talking about his work but you will have to somehow at least explain and tell the stories that are related to, uh, to some of the works. So Issa Sam was born in 1945 in Dakar and very precisely in Wakam. I say precisely in Wakam because Wakam is also one of his akas that he uses. He also calls himself uh, Joe Wakam, Issa Ramangelisa, uh, and so on. Uh, he was born to a traditional land-owning family. He spent half his childhood under the protective eyes of his parents and extended family, where he had the privilege of benefiting 
from the teaching of a number of elders who encourage his, arti his artistic and political interests from a very young age. This artistic and political <coughs> seed planted in him during his youth has proven to be the crucial point of departure for much of what he has done throughout his journey. He studied philosophy, law, and sociology at the University of Dakar, and at the same time, he studied art at the uh, Institut National des Arts, National Arts Institute, which the art school back then was called. And this was during the turbulent second half of the 1960s, so in the second part of uh, 1960. Issa was one of the very important protagonists of the 1968 turbulent protest, um, student protests in, uh, at the University of Dakar. A keen observer and thinker by nature, Sam fights for freedom on all fronts, not only for art, but also for the mind, and does it paradoxically with an almost obsequious respect for the established order. This apparent contradiction should, not ha should however not be seen as synonymous with rudeness or disrespect. While many of his fellow students emigrated to the West to continue their studies, Issa Sam deliberately chose to stay in Senegal, aware of the importance of how the, the environment the big, the big influence that the environment has on an artistic process. His Marxist influence readings have contributed to the production of a radical aesthetic, rarely present in the canons of contemporary art in Africa. After the student revolt of May 1968, which lasted several years in Dakar, Sam founded the Laboratoire Agita in 1973 with a group of artists from various disciplines. The multidisciplinary actions of this laboratory for free expression were directed against the formalism of the Ecole de Dakar, an aesthetic movement developed at the Ecole Nationale des Beaux-Arts, National Art School, uh, to support the negative philosophy of President Leopold Sedar Senghor. The laboratory was far removed from the usual objectification of art or art as object. It developed forms of expression that focus on ex experimentation, agitation, ephemerality, and political and social ideas. Thus treating, creating, a new social aesthetics. Public participation is extremely important in such, group in, in such group work, as is the preference for communicative actions rather than physical objects. The laboratory's work is not utopian or self-referential, but rooted in the immediate political situation. <coughs> Several members are now deceased, unfortunately, However, the spirit and the forms of production of this collective are materialized in this artist in, in this artist's output. Although he is an, an influential member of Agita and works collectively, Issa Sam has always developed and continues to develop an individual production, and that is what forms the subject of this curatorial proje uh, project that I have started with him uh, five years ago. <laughs> His work is certainly comprehensible, yet at the same time, it is cryptic, evanescent, and elusive of uh, simplistic or superficial interpretative frameworks. It is a body of work that despite its resoluteness resolutely avant-gardist and perpetually experimental nature is firmly rooted in the African traditions of artistic production in which the multiplicity, the simultaneity of forms and actions such as orality and performance, uh, sculpture and dance play an important role. 
His assemblage and performances often explore revolutionary subjects and aesthetics, thereby suggesting the possibility that artistic energy can be put to the to, to the use to good use by supporting the weakest members of the society. You are seeing, I'm not talking to specific images, uh, but you have a kind of a slideshow of the most recent images of uh, Issa Samb uh, studio in, in Dakar, which is ever-changing, which uh, uh, at different time and moments has a different aspect, different content. And what you see currently is the installation uh, that was there, uh, on that is, I think, still there uh, during the, the Dakar Biennial. And it was an installation of uh, works by uh, uh, an artist, I mean, a painter, who share, I mean, who lives and works in the studio with, uh, with Issa. Nonetheless, over the past few years, Issa's work has cons consciously or unconsciously moved away from the collect collective style. The conversation, excuse me, and uh, the curatorial uh, process that be I began a few years ago aims both to communicate the overall artistic philosophy of Issa Sam and to highlight and demonstrate his individuality within it. You will note that if Issa ever will speak during this talk, which is not sure, um, that he speaks a lot in we. Uh, I think uh, I've hardly ever heard Issa say I in uh, all the time that I've been working with, me, with him. And, uh, but that we is, uh, is the we of the collaboration, is the we of the collective. And um, the, the include, I mean, the invitation to, uh, to Jean-Michel Bruyère to, uh, to participate to this exhibition was not only to have the opportunity to present the works that Jean-Michel and Issa do together, but also to have the, the possibility to expand the the, the access to the performance work and uh, the theater work, the film work that, that Issa Sam does, which a lot of people don't, uh, don't really know. Um, I really think that, and this is very, very character characteristic, I'm sorry, my English is sometimes just, <laughs> this is very char characteristic of uh, Issa Sam is that he, he considers himself really an enabler, as a facilitator of, uh, of creative energies and, uh, and, uh, and radical and interesting and political ideas. And he collaborates with a lot of diverse people mm -hmm. and sometimes this collaboration intersect and sometimes they do not. And uh, in the in the case of uh, the, the collaboration with, uh, with Jean-Michel Bruyère, which is going on since, uh, I think, over 20 years now, uh, right? More. Oh, yeah, since more than 20 years now, uh, it is also embedded in a, in a collaborative spirit because Jean-Michel uh, set up uh, La Fabrique's which is an artist collective based in Marseille that includes a wide range of, uh, of artists from various disciplines, including also physicians, for instance, right? And, uh, and Issa is one of the members of, or one of the member of this, uh, of this artist uh, collective also, and a key person within the productions that this collective and Jean-Michel does. The exhibition that we, you have downstairs from the ethics of acting to acting to empire without signs is, uh, is, an is, a, is an attempt to, I mean, you have to look at it as uh, 
we were trying to sort of convey the idea and the feel of the courtyard that you see in the background, which is impossible very clearly, which is absolutely not even, should not even be tried. But uh, what I wanted to do is, uh, is to bring a few strands of Issa's practice. So in the exhibition, you see uh, Objets Trouvé, which are some of the, the, the magnified, uh, you know, the school and, uh, and the, the pair of shoes, or the non-work sign, and then the collages, and then, of course, a lot of the uh, installation of the hanging, the notes, the writings, the films, and uh, the paintings, and, uh, and cloth, fabric, and the corpse, which is one of the very, very uh, important objects in, uh, in many of uh, Issa's uh, um, installation. I mean, in, in the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation, it's a permanent conversation with uh, departed friends and family and people. It's, a, it's a, the transition between life and death and uh, that has uh, uh, a, strong, uh, a strong importance in, the, in, Issa's, uh, in Issa's thinking and, and, uh, and practice. So um, I think um, I will maybe stop here very quickly because you will have a proper academic introduction on, when is that, Elvira? <laughs> on the 26th of June about uh, Artist Collective. We want to, uh, we would like to engage with you into, into a conversation because uh, this is a, a, a conversation, not a full lecture, and I want to give uh, Jean-Michel also the opportunity to, uh, to account on his collaboration with Issa. Yes, you will have to do it. Qu'est-ce que je dois dire <rire> euh, Déjà, moi, je vais parler en français euh, parce que je, 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 si je, je dois m'exprimer, je veux que Issa comprenne ce que je dis. Mm -hmm. euh, donc, euh, so, he's going to speak French to, uh, for Issa to understand. Sorry about that. <rire> euh, alors, tu veux que je parle de notre collaboration mm -hmm. euh, non, moi, je suis arrivé au Sénégal en, au début des années, tout début des années 90. Et, euh, et Issa est une des premières personnes que j'ai rencontrées. So, he arrived in Sénégal at the beginning of the 90s. And Issa was the first person he met, euh, Et c'est resté la personne la plus importante que j'ai rencontrée au, au Sénégal jusqu'à aujourd'hui. So he is the most important person he met at, in Senegal until now. Alors no, notre histoire est plutôt une histoire d'amitié d'abord. Donc ça, je peux pas vraiment euh, l'exposer. Euh, je ne sais pas faire ça. So this is a, about friendship, really. Um, so you cannot really explain so much. Oh. Mais peut-être je peux expliquer dans quel état d'esprit je suis arrivé au Sénégal et, et, et pourquoi cette connexion s'est faite rapidement et, et pourquoi elle a été productive. Euh, alors, il faut faire pour ça un tout petit peu d'histoire française. Je suis okay. désolé. Donc, so il faut expliquer peut-être le contexte quand vous arrivez au Sénégal pour vous faire comprendre. En France, je, moi je suis né la même année qu'une institution française qui s'appelle le ministère de la Culture. So he's born on the same year than uh, um, the French ministry the of French culture was established. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, le, le ministère de la culture est une invention politique de droite en France. So the um, cultural minister is an invention, political invention from the right uh, wing. Et, euh, et c'est une structure qui a été établie par euh, l'ancienne administration coloniale. 
so, and it has been established by uh, all the um, colonial administration. Uh, administration. En 1959, quand uh, Charles de Gaulle et André Malraux ont décidé de créer un ministère de la Culture, il y avait en France, revenu des colonies, une grande quantité d'administrateurs coloniales au chômage. Et on les a tous engagés dans l'invention et la création d'un ministère de la Culture. So in 59, a lot of people came back from the, um, from the colonies. colonies and helped to invent the um, cultural minister. Ouais. Donc la, le, la culture en France a été pensée sur un système administratif de colonies. So the culture in France has been put on um, administrative, colonial and administrative system. Et comme cette chose n'a jamais été mise en crise, elle continue encore aujourd'hui. And because this thing has not been in crisis yet, it still continues today. Donc, comme moi, j'étais intéressé par le travail artistique, euh, mais pas trop pour être colonisé, euh, je suis parti dans les pays qui s'étaient débarrassés de l'administration coloniale, euh, pour prendre exemple. So, because he's interested in artistic practice, but not uh, based on colonial system, basically, he decided to go in places uh, where this institution kind of institution was not... Um, was kicked out. Kicked out. Ah. <laughs> um, et, um, et donc, je suis d'abord allé faire quelques travaux au Congo, qui s'appelait Zahir à cette époque. Et assez rapidement, je suis venu à Dakar et je m'y suis installé par hasard. Et j'ai rencontré Issa pratiquement dès le départ. Et, et c'est à partir de là que euh, j'ai constitué mon travail un peu dans, dans cette amitié dans cette, euh, et dans son exemple, en fait. So, he started to work with Zaire in Congo. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Dakar and started to work with Issa in a um, friendship. Friendship, and relationship. Also as a role model. And I, and Issa was his role model. Uh -huh. um, alors, le... moi, je, quand je fabrique quelque chose, c'est toujours pour mes amis, euh, à partir de l'amitié. C'est-à-dire que je fais pas de, je, je crée pas un concept dans un coin et après je fais un casting. Je, je vis avec, entouré d'amis et parce qu'ils sont ce qu'ils sont, parce qu'on a les relations qu'on a. Euh, je vais créer ceci plutôt que cela. Euh, donc c'est toujours fondé sur, sur l'amitié et jamais sur euh, euh, un intérêt d'abord artistique, esthétique, etc. Euh, et d'une certaine manière, euh, cette fondation amicale est un moyen d'échapper à, euh, à, à ce système. So when you create something, it's always linked with a friend, friendship relationship because you never do something for himself or for own interests, uh, for his own interests, basically? No, c'est pas no. ça. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so can you repeat? Reprends. Non, non, l'amitié, travailler dans l'amitié, avoir l'amitié comme point de départ, c'est un moyen d'échapper au fait de faire une carrière, au fait de, de se positionner sur des, des, des courants esthétiques, euh, sur des questions de goût, etc. C'est une... C'est un, un moyen d'éviter tout ce monde-là. So, working with relationship and friendship is a way to go outside of artistic um, career building, career building and a trend, probably. So. Yes.
Ça n'a rien d'extraordinaire. Hein. Beaucoup de beaucoup d'artistes dans l'histoire ont, ont, ont travaillé de la même manière, euh, à, au, dans un cercle d'amis et, et, et avec l'amitié comme point de départ. C'est vraiment pas une invention du tout. So a lot of artists work this way and um, um, it's nothing extraordinary. Yeah, it's nothing extraordinary and it's how things okay. start. Euh, ensuite, les films, les films qu'on voit ici, euh, qui sont interprétés par Issa, ils sont, euh, ils sont comme ils sont parce que euh, Issa est comme il est. Et, et, euh, et en tout cas, c'est comme ça que je le vois. Euh, et qu'à un moment, je sais que je peux faire ça avec lui, donc on le fait. Donc, euh. um, so ces films sont... Are... As they are, because they are with Issa, so they are specific in this way. But can you repeat again? Sorry. <laughs> uh, le, les, les films sont tels qu'ils sont parce que Issa est comme lui il est. Okay, so films are as they are because Issa is as he is. Je veux dire par là que ce n'est pas une chose qu'on fabrique ensemble au sens de s'asseoir pour inventer un concept, euh, mais on le fabrique ensemble parce qu'on sait qu'on peut faire ça ensemble, euh, in, en, en, intuitivement entre nous, sans, avoir, sans passer par l'étape d'une conception commune. Ok, so you are working together to, because there is a, it's not to create a concept, it's because a connection is an intuition is possible so it's, it's really difficult to do i'm sure it is <laughs> i cannot be doing both you know no <laughs> okay mm. et alors après tu me demandais par rapport aux au, au, au huit portraits par exemple mm. uh, les huit portraits qui sont là sont sont huit films sur 147 films Uh, qui compose ensemble un, un seul film à 360 degrés. Mm -hmm. So these eight portraits are eight films on 140 films that uh, compose together a big 360 degree films. Mm -hmm. A big 50, uh, 360 degrees. 360 degrees. 360 degrees installation. Okay. Okay. Uh, et uh, uh, c'est une composition qui a pour sujet la tragédie d'Actéon. So it has for subject uh, Actéon tragedy. Uh -huh. et, um, et Issa représente les piliers d'une ville euh, euh, qui est au, au centre, qui est à l'équateur de cette composition. Donc ce qu'on voit là, ce sont seulement les piliers d'une toute une construction. C'est un tout petit fragment de ce film. So what we see here, it's only a fragment of the film. It's only the piliers, pillars, pillars of the city, of the composition, yeah, of, of the, the entire composition. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Ok. Yeah. Je pense que c'est difficile pour, la, pour toi. Hein? It is. Ouais. Quand nous sommes arrivés en Avignon, il y a un idiot quelque part qui n'a pas voulu que le peuple d'Avignon, celui de Villa, uh -huh. voit à l'intérieur de... C'était quoi le, Un pompier Hein? Tu veux dire quoi L'histoire ou le, le film lui-même Tu veux que je décrive C'était quoi Cette espèce de boule ouais. que j'avais posée là, que j'avais bien posée là Oui. C'était la sécurité qui voulait pas mm -hmm. quoi ouais. C'était quoi C'était des problèmes de normes. Alors, so, when you, are, you arrive um, at Avignon, at Avignon um, because the, the production has been shown, was premiered in Avignon, Festival d'Avignon. Ok. Donc, quand vous arrivez là, quelque chose n'était pas autorisé 
be sure. Someone was trying to present, uh, prevent the, the, the show, the production to okay. be shown. I'm a buzz. Oui. Oui. Puis après. Ouais. Entre temps, les, 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 les règles de sécurité avaient changé. Oui. Ouais. Ouais. Ils n'ont pas voulu, donc. Non. Because of security reasons. Mm. Mm. Because the, the, you have to uh, imagine a, a, a full immersive uh, uh, installation with the films are only one part of it. There are many other things happening uh, uh, on stage. And uh, apparently there were some issues with uh, security and fire and so on, danger around. And uh, so um, the, the fire department, les pompiers, c'est ça? Oui. Um, caused some problems for the production to, to be shown. Mais une fois de plus, vraiment, on n'est pas là pour parler de, de, mm. de, de moi. Je, je, c euh, je suis là parce qu'on m'a dit de m'asseoir là, mais, mais euh, ce n'est pas ma position ici. Moi, je suis là pour accompagner Issa. Il y a 25 ans qu'Issa accompagne tous mes gestes. Euh, quoi que je lui demande, quel que soit le pays où nous devons aller, il vient avec moi et, euh, et il, il fait ce que je lui propose de faire. Euh, pour la première fois grâce à toi, la situation est inverse. Donc j'aimerais vraiment pouvoir en profiter pour euh, me comporter exactement comme lui dans l'autre sens, si c'est possible. Hein, et qu'on ne parle pas d'autre chose que de, que de lui. Donc, nous ne sommes pas ici pour parler de vous seulement, nous sommes ici pour parler de la collaboration avec lui et de Issa. Parce que. Issa, only. Only. <laughs> Not mainly. Okay. Ça, est-ce que tu voudrais dire quelque chose Il y a un moment de l'art qui est un moment politique. Mm -hmm. C'est sûr. So there is a, art, a time in art that was political. Social. Social. Il y a des artistes qui interviennent. Where artists do things, participate. À l'intérieur de ce moment-là. In we within that moment, inside of that moment. De mon point de vue, ce sont ceux-là, les, les créateurs. And from his point of view, these are the real artists. Donc quand Jean-Michel arrive à Dakar. So when Jean-Michel arrives in Dakar. Son art. With his art. S'occuper des enfants. Oui, mais là, on va encore parler de moi. Donc, euh... <rire> tu vois, tu ne vas pas y échapper. <rire> OK. Tu veux que je parle de ça euh, Par exemple. OK. Let's go. Euh, alors, mais je le prends un peu à, 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 à de travers. Et puis, et puis après, je reviens. Hein. Mm -hmm. mais, euh, euh, il y a une chose que vous ne pouvez pas voir ici du travail d'Issa qui, à mon avis, on ne va pas les ordonner ni leur donner une taille, mais est une chose absolument essentielle, c'est son impact et son implication au quotidien dans la société. Il y a quelque chose que ne peut jamais voir ici, et nowhere en fait, et Jean-Michel est so right and something that cannot be exhibited because it has to do with Issa's influence in the society in Senegal. Mm -hmm. That cannot be shown. And this is another part of his amazing work. Et c'est mm -hmm. évidemment très difficile à décrire parce qu'on ne peut pas en, 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 en décrire les limites. C'est une chose, une influence énorme avec, avec le temps. Uh, c'est un travail quotidien et, et gigantesque. And there is no way you can you can really encompass it or even englobe it because it is a work through a time and and uh, and on a daily basis. It's very relational oriented. Et I'm une, adding stuff. C'est une c'est une intense. <laughs> Now that I took over. <laughs> c'est une intense création contemporaine. Yeah. Uh, et, et de mon point de vue, uh, 
euh, euh, c'est quelque chose vraiment d'ultra contemporain. Mmh. C'est-à-dire que où l'art où l'art contemporain va vers mm. ça, mm. ou il ne va nulle part. Mais enfin, ça c'est très personnel, mais... Yeah, and this is something which is ultra contemporary, even beyond the contemporary, because either artistic practice goes towards this kind of uh, attitudes, I, I don't like to call it attitude, this kind of uh, behavior, mm -hmm. this kind of being, Or art dies, basically. Alors, après, maintenant j'ai dit l'essentiel, je peux parler des détails, donc moi par exemple. Euh, et Now that I've said <laughs> the essential, I can talk about the detail, like myself. You are the big detail. Et, euh, <laughs> alors, il s'avère que je parle d'une chose euh, qui a eu lieu à Dakar autour des enfants errants. Issa wants me to talk about uh, a project that took place in Dakar around street children. Uh, en 95, in 95, uh, je, je préparais un livre uh, sur la guerre au, contre les pauvres. La... In 95, I was uh, working on a publication on war against the poor. Et puisque c'était un concept à l'époque très très à la mode, la guerre contre la pauvreté. Mm. Uh, It was a very uh, fashionable concept then, kind of the war against poverty and abolition of debt and so on. Et comme moi j'étais assez jeune et plutôt naïf, je ne comprenais pas pourquoi on voulait faire la guerre à des milliards de gens mm -hmm. plutôt qu'à quelques-uns okay. euh, qui avaient toute la richesse. And since I was back then, I was still young and naive, and but I didn't understand why they wanted to make war against milli millions and billions of people instead of making war against a few people who are the rich ones. Um, donc, j'ai préparé ce livre. Et dans ce cadre-là, j'ai un jour parlé avec deux enfants qui étaient errants, qui étaient souvent dans ma rue, mm. Ibe et Amadou. And once I was uh, I mean, I was working on that book, and once, uh, one day I, to, I spoke to two street children who were regularly in my street, Ibe and Amadou. Mm -hmm. Et euh, les conversations étaient vraiment intéressantes. J'ai laissé le livre de côté pour un temps. Je l'ai finalement écrit, mais plus tard. Mm. Et j'en ai écrit un autre avec eux. So, um, I, uh, I stopped working because the conversation was so interesting. I, uh, I stopped working on the book that I was working on and concentrated on the conversation with the street, street children and eventually made another pub, uh, different publications with the street children. Et après, pour faire court, comme par principe, quand je peux, j'ai pas de raison de dire non, je dis oui. Mm -hmm. euh, et si on me demande quelque chose, chaque fois je peux dire oui, je dis oui. Et donc, en au bout de 10 ans, on avait, j'avais adopté 43 enfants. Euh, and uh, uh, over 10 years, and first of all, I have a problem saying no. Whenever I can say yes to somebody, to something, I always do so. And over the course of 10 years, I have by then adopted 43 children. Et euh, créé un un centre médical, un centre dentaire. And develop uh, a medical center, a dental, dental uh, health center. Uh, um, une école d'art. And an art school. Et enfin, quantité d'autres choses. And many other things. Mais sans jamais avoir fait le projet de le... But without le, ever le having the project of doing it. It's, these are things that came about organically by the first two uh, street children and then the third one, the fourth one, and so on. This is how. <coughs> et, euh, et par exemple, on a créé un centre médical parce que c'était trop cher d'aller à l'hôpital tous les jours. <coughs> We created, for instance, a, a, a medical center because it became too expensive to treat the children. In at hospitals, so we did it. We sort of organized it 
ourselves. Mais pas parce qu'on s'est levé un matin en se disant ah ce serait tellement joli de faire un centre médical. It's not juste because we pratique. thought we thought like oh we want to, to have a medical center. It's just something that came. I mean that imposed himself on us. Et donc après dix ans. J'avais finalement créé une grosse institution avec beaucoup de gens qui y travaillaient, etc. Et alors, alors que j'ai passé mon temps à, à fuir les institutions. And after 10 years, I had the, the organization has grown so big uh, with a lot of people contributing, working in it, even though I've never wanted to build an institution and I always shied away from institutions. Um, et donc, je l'ai détruite. So, mm. I killed it. Mm. Mm. C'est ça. Mm. Yeah. But you should, I think you should, uh, I know this story very well, because I think I, I, uh, I lived it maybe the last few years of the institutions, of the institution when I arrived in Dakar. Uh, I think it would be interesting for the audience to know that a few of The children out of that uh, organization are now very well established artists. Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> oui, mais ça c'est la morale. Uh, no, I, I, mean, I think it's important to know. And either very well established <laughs> artists or very active in the creative kind of field and uh, some were further adopted by other people after the institution was Ouais. Euh, j'ai dé détruit l'institution mais pas ouais. les gens oui. j'ai tué l'institution mais pas les gens et si on pouvait trouver un autre sujet maintenant ça serait vraiment bien tu voudrais dire quelque chose à l'audience je remercie He thanks everybody. So that means actually that we can give over to the, to the, to the audience. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, if you have any, you know, whatever you would want to say and share with us. Yes, I, I'd just like to go back to one thing you alluded to earlier on about the security mm -hmm. of part of the show or a piece of work because uh, uh, it's kind of interesting when you think about the found object. Nom et prénom, titre. <laughs> Grant, yeah. s'il peut donner son nom. It should function. please give yeah. your, your name and, and, and first, first name and last name and your, your title and affiliation. Issa wants to know that. Yeah. Merci. My name, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is John O'Hora. I'm an Irish artist. And uh, I'm very interested. Uh, actually, this evening is a very good example of what does get lost in translation and what can be embellished along the way. But uh, I wanted to go back to uh, the... Um, what I picked up or what I thought might be something that would be of interest because uh, if the found object is almost like uh, an archaeological experience in a sense that uh, meaning and value is brought to something within a particular cultural context and yet it's very interesting that a security group wouldn't accept it as uh, perhaps as a piece of art that should be allowed to be treated like the rest of the art that was being yeah, shown that in that cool particular exhibition. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I was just curious if you could say a little bit more about that, um, about the, what they were objecting to. Mm. OK. Ce n'était pas exactement le cas, en fait. Hein, mais, euh, mais je comprends que le sujet vous intéresse, puisque le, la, la, les progrès constants de la sécurité, des règles de sécurité, sont sans doute le plus grand danger euh, qui nous attend. Um, I mean, he. Um, I understand that uh, you are interested in the in the in the idea, uh, but that was not uh, a major 
issue, but however, uh, the progress of uh, security and uh, safety is uh, the next biggest danger that we have to face. Tu permets. Bien sûr. Sécurité, insécurité. En vérité, ce qui s'est passé pour le dôme à Avignon. But actually, security and insecurity or safety without safety. C'est que l'endroit où c'était posé était le bon endroit. So Comment what actually happened with the dome is Comment expliquer how to explain it? Le fait que ce dôme qui était si bien placé à cet endroit précis, à un moment donné, pose un problème à la sécurité. So how come that this dome, part of this production, placed at a ideal place, how come could that be a problem to security, to safety actually? In English, I always mix that. What is security? What is safety? Safety, sec okay. in French, se safety is security. Uh -huh. C'est ça. Et security en anglais, je comme ça. Safety. safety. Yeah. Oui, Issa. Moi, je ne peux pas l'expliquer. Ah. Bien. Hello. My name is Heidi Simuba and I'm an artist. Um, my question has to do with what, what Issa said about there was a um, moment in time when um, artists who were socially active or politically active um, is what he considered to be real artists. And the words trend and, you know, things that, that was what was hot at that time, you know, what, what you mentioned as well about poverty or the war against poverty and things like that. Those were the things flying around at that moment. And I just want to ask, is it something that you guys consider that is still what makes an artist relevant or an artist real? Um, is an artist who is political? Because at the moment, um, there tends to be a kind of shift where um, artists have other concerns. Um, so I was just wondering, like, is it something that you think has spilled over to this new moment, or was it a moment uh, specific to, to that time, or that place, even? Can you okay. Uh, elle veut savoir, en fait, parce que uh, tu as dit tout à l'heure qu'il y a eu un moment où les artistes uh, étaient politiquement et socialement dans, engagés dans ce moment. Et, euh, et Jean-Michel a mentionné euh, euh, la motivation en fait de, de créer Mankeninki à l'époque. Euh, et sa question est en fait de savoir est -ce le fait que ça a changé depuis lors et que les artistes ne s'intéressent plus vraiment beaucoup à ce genre d'engagement. Euh, sa question est de savoir si... Euh, tu penses que si un artiste n'est pas engagé dans ce genre d'activité, euh, il est moins un artiste C'est ça Moi, je pense que l'artiste, il est un artiste. Bien. Je pense que l'artiste est toujours un artiste. Il y a des artistes engagés, il y a aussi des artistes désengagés. And there are engaged and disengaged artists. Les artistes engagés, de mon point de vue, ils le sont politiquement dans la société où ils créent. And the engaged artists are politically engaged in the society that they live in. So it's not about I'm extending because I know what he thinks. It's not about uh, you know, taking any sort of causes here and there. And this is also relates to what Jean-Michel mentioned, the, the social impact, the social involvement about where you live. Uh, you don't need to go far to fight for any causes. You have a lot of them exactly where you are. Uh, mm -hmm. je, je, je mm -hmm. Si vous plaît, Issa me contredira si, si je m'avance trop euh, en parlant pour nous deux. Mais moi, être un artiste ou pas, je, 
ça n'est absolument pas mon problème. Euh, je me contrefiche d'être un artiste ou pas. Euh, je ne me pose jamais, jamais cette question. Euh, et je, la seule qui m'intéresse, c'est la question, un, de la liberté, deux, de à qui je parle et au nom de qui. Anything that I'm concerned with. What I'm really concerned with is first freedom, and then uh, second, to whom am I talking to, and third, um, le troisième c'était quoi? Uh, à qui tu parles? Ah, au nom de qui? In whose name am I talking? Basically. Um, I also, I, I really think that, uh, um, la réplique de ce point de vue, d'où parlons-nous, à qui nous parlons, quelle est notre situation Là tout de suite. Quelle est la situation mm -hmm. de celui qui aimait mm -hmm. So the answer to this is, from which standpoint do we speak? Et la and, position de celui qui en soit. And who is it that we are talking to? And what is the position of the person or the people that we are talking to? On peut, on peut parler de ça un peu encore? Oui, bien sûr. Non, ok. Euh, euh, si on prend une, mé une, une métaphore de Malcolm X, par exemple, quand il parle des... Il parle des, des euh, euh, des nègres des champs et des nègres de maison. When we take a metaphor, a Malcolm X metaphor, when he talks about field negro and house negroes. Si on, part, si on considère la, la question de l'art, euh, en France c'est très simple, parce que art et culture sont pensés, le mot et les mots sont presque les mêmes, mm -hmm. ils sont accaparés par une seule partie de la société. And uh, if we think about in the context of art, In, in the French uh, thinking, or in France, it's uh, arts and culture, it's kind of like one word. L'art est fait et concerne le milieu de la société, c'est-à-dire les gens qui travaillent, ce qu'on pourrait dire, la société de service. Mm. Mm. And art concerns the, the middle class, or the, the servicing society. Est-ce qu'on pourrait appeler les nègres de maison. And what one could call... House Negroes. Ceux qui sont en dessous, qu'on pourrait appeler les nègres des champs. Those who are below that class. L'art, c'est pas pour eux. Ils sont supposés n'y comprendre could, rien. What we call the uh, field Negroes, art is not for them. Ils comprennent pas. Il faut des they, médiateurs pour leur expliquer. They don't understand what art is and le, le need, génie de l'artiste. You need mediators. This is not what he thinks. He's just describing. A <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> Et, euh, et puis au-dessus, il y a euh, les très riches And qui, above that you have the very rich qui spéculent en achetant de l'art. Et, et, et ce n'est pas du tout leur problème non plus. Ça, ce sont les maîtres et ils s'en foutent. De And, uh, they don't care about art either. Alors, moi, je n'ai pas envie de passer ma vie à bosser pour les nègres de maison. So I don't want to spend my time to for and I don't want to spend my time working for house negroes. Aussi hein mais pas seulement euh, alors si c'est ça être politique alors je suis très politique. Euh, mm -hmm. et and if what my 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 position is political then I'm very political. Si c'est s'intéresser à la droite, la gauche, etc., je suis pas du tout politique. It's not about uh, right wing, left wing, liberals or whatever. It's about I'm adding it. What is right? Et ils savent à Dakar pendant que et ils ont bien le droit. Beaucoup d'autres font carrière, euh, euh, vendent des toiles en quantité, etc. Ils savent s'occuper de la société. Mm. Uh. And uh, and Issa in Dakar, Issa never sought to to have a career. Issa never sought to to be recognized. Il s'est never so to be collected, nor bought or whatever. Ou vendu. 
or even sold. Um, because his work is within the society and that is, that is not, c'est pas monnayable, that is not, you cannot, no, no, you cannot, yeah, it, you cannot, you cannot put, you cannot translate it in money as such, you know, and uh, thank you, we are lost in translation. <laughs> Super, <laughs> and uh, and what I uh, what what I would add is that um, I mean Jean Michel started about talking ab about his relationship with Issa Hart that he met and so on, and this is and that was also can can also be read as an attempt to conveying this social power and the social impact that Issa has in uh, in the society in Dhaka. My own experience is. Is, uh, is similar to, uh, to, uh, to Jean-Michel's because when I came to Dakar uh, the first time in, uh, in 95, uh, I've hardly put down my suitcase and two hours later, I was taken to Issa's studio. So Issa's was, Issa was one of the very, very first person that uh, that I met in Dakar, and since then he has been a steady, faithful companion throughout my entire life and work, and this is also why it's not a surprise that we are sitting here today. And this part of the work that, that he does in terms of, you know, feeding people and feeding uh, 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 people with ideas, I think. Person, I also think personally, is his really his biggest artwork that you cannot exhibit mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, and beyond that, I really think that uh, without trying to establish a form, he established a form. So the the known form as a form, and uh, the. The greatest artwork of his entire practice is actually himself, and uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, to uh, to translate that. Even though, for the last few years, we have been. It's very interesting when uh, when we went for for the one of the exhibitions last year. I mean. He's extremely professional, extremely on time. And uh, um, so we go for a site visit. We'll stay for a few days. He finds things. He says this and that. We go back to Dakar, prepare everything, the material that have to go. And it's always the same process. I go to the, I go to the courtyard. We start talking. I say, we'll do this and this and that. Who will just be there and say, you do what you want. Uh, you take what you want. You want this, take it. You don't want this, it's okay. And uh, when we were coming here uh, to install for, for Iniva, uh, Grant at some point asked me, oh, then you'll be busy installing and so and so. So, you know, Isa will not be installing anything because he doesn't think that that's his job. His job is not to install artworks. He says, he always tells me, you choose to show me, I accompany you in your exhibitions, but I'm not installing anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is really uh, 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 the kind of uh, generosity also and, uh, and character that, uh, that uh, he, puts, uh, he puts at play. And, and, and I really think that it is, uh, to come back to uh, what he said earlier in terms of you, you hear a lot of, you know, a kind, you, a lot of artists being opposed to this <coughs> and that, and uh, being opposed, for instance, the Ukraine uh, uh, situation right now, uh, everybody being at, uh, uh, um, come on, the, uh, in protest to that. I don't want to diminish anything, but I think that in his opinion, we discussed it, the problem of Ukraine is a, for Ukraine artists first. It's not about 
English artists or American artists or whoever to start, you know, being more vocal than the people who are there themselves. So, and, and this is the, the, the strong link to the immediate environment and also the role of the artist in his immediate society. That is, uh, uh, that is what he, he, uh, he's putting forward, which is, I think, uh, um, extremely inspiring and uh, uh, extremely, uh, you know, important to do. Tu as tout compris, n'est-ce pas? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I just make a quick yes. Mic. She okay. has the mic, and you've spoken once, so. <laughs> it was, this was, uh, is this on? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Margrethe Tronsegaard, and I'm um, a curator based in London, but I was also at the, curator, at the curatorial residency of Raw Material Company in Dhaka, where I saw <coughs> your courtyard, and I've seen your work at Documenta. Je m'appelle Margrethe Tronsegaard, <coughs> je suis uh, commissaire basé à Londres, mais j'étais aussi commissaire en résidence à Raw Material et j'ai eu la possibilité de voir la cour. Ça fait longtemps maintenant. Donc. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask, having seen this, your practice displayed in different forms in different contexts and experienced it in Dakar and with your work, with your opinion as well of working in this local community and this is where the artist has his, his value, what is the motivation of having these different displays of your practice outside of Dhaka? And what is, in your opinion, perhaps both of you, you as a curator as well, of sharing this in a different context? Oh, I'll take that one because, <laughs> I, <laughs> because I know the answer. <laughs> Peut-être tu peux traduire. Oui, je vais, mais il comprend très bien. <laughs> Donc, Margrethe voulait savoir, ayant vu la cour à Dakar et ayant aussi vu les expositions à l'étranger, euh, elle voulait savoir quelle était euh, et la différence effectivement entre ce qu'il y a à Dakar et ce qu'on peut voir ici. Euh, quelle est ta motivation de présenter le travail à l'étranger comme ça, ou une autre motivation. Donc, je disais que je vais prendre ça, mais est-ce que tu veux répondre à ça Non, c'est toi qui réponds. I told you. <laughs> okay. uh, first of all, Isa had no motivation to show anything anywhere. Uh, okay. These are my curatorial projects that I put on him and that he gladly accepts to do. Just like he does with the films and the productions of Jean-Michel. So, uh, personally, uh, I am in, my motivation is that uh, this is a, an artistic practice unique in the entire contemporary art history of Africa in general or even internationally, globally, worldwide. And, and I'm, I am, I am as, a, as an exhibition maker concerned with the fact that it should be uh, shown, uh, explained, uh, understood, outside the context of what has been so far written and shown about it, uh, which is the context of the laboratoire, which is absolutely not anymore exactly what it was 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago. And uh, I was interested, and since the, the entire spirit of the laboratoire I believe, even though a few of the members are still around, I strongly believe that the entire spirit of the laboratory resides in this man. And, uh, uh, and he's the only one who applies the, the, the ethics 
of, uh, of the laboratoire in its most faithful and most generous manner. And, uh, and I was just shocked to realize that uh, there was no single serious curatorial work or critical work done about his practice. So that's how I started doing it. That's all. Yes. No, I was just going to ask, sorry, I didn't, I didn't read the mic. Are we, 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 uh, we are recording. Oh, oh okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, if you don't want to record it. Thank you. I was just going to ask which other African countries you Excuse me? I was just going to ask which other African countries you've taken the, the work to. I mean, in the context of trying to redefine the relationships of artistic interpretation and power and so forth, which other African countries have you taken the, the exhibition well, to? Do you, are you involved in exhibition making? No, no, I don't know. I'm just asking. Is it okay, it's very issues? difficult yeah. to take exhibitions around. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, as in, <laughs> oh, I mean, as in, where you've done the installation and so forth. My language is not, as in, so for instance, we have Issa here in, in, in London. Yeah. So, which other African countries have you done this week? So this far, none. Here? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Elvira. Oh, excuse me. Le jeune homme demandait où est-ce que où est-ce qu'on a fait d'autres expositions, toi et moi. Et je lui ai en Afrique. Je lui ai dit euh, à part à Dakar, euh, on n'en a pas fait dans d'autres pays. Um, Elspeth Court, I teach African art, and I was around in '95, and, uh, and it's just absolutely wonderful to see this. Uh, je m'appelle Elspeth Court because I have to do multiple. Thanks, uh, yeah, you sorry. know. Uh, um, je m'appelle Esther Court. Uh, J'enseigne l'art uh, africain. Et j'étais là en 95, <coughs> ici. That's just the, I mean, that's to make the, the sort of jump uh, in the sense that I, can, I think I can appreciate very well what you've done downstairs in the sense of what is a sense of gives us a sense of history or depth of history, but also introduces the uh, new kinds of work which uh, Issa Sam has been involved with. Excuse me. Je pense que uh, je peux bien apprécier ce que, ce que tu as fait. You mean Issa or me or both For of Issa us? Issa and Jean-Michel. Okay. Jean okay. okay, ce que nous avons fait dans, en salle, en bas, uh, parce que ça, ça donne une, uh, une, une uh, grille de lecture par rapport à ce qu'elle a vu en 95 et aussi uh, une extension à la lecture de ce que... So I thank you for that. Et, et nous remercie pour uh, ça. My, my, question, my question is about the work downstairs that's in the light boxes along the left wall because those look very different to me from the actual videos where uh, Issa Sam is... Uh, uh, looks like a cabaret to some extent in one of them, and I think the other one is in Avignon. But the light boxes are more in the line of where he's the, the sort of object of, uh, of the work, either as a shaman mm. or I can't quite tell. Mm. And I really can't tell. So I'm asking what's going on uh, in the light boxes, if you could oh. please uh, tell us something. Tu vas pas y échapper, hein? Et tu as compris la question. <laughs> Mais il faut que tu traduises pour Issa. <rire> il a compris aussi. <rire> ok. Euh, ok. Euh, je vais vous répondre. Après, j'aimerais être autorisé à dire quelque chose de plus concernant Issa. Euh, euh, alors, j'ai parlé de ça tout à l'heure. Hein, de, de de, de, elle, elle parle de Sipoteris. Mm -hmm. Et, et euh, on a essayé, c'est très difficile à expliquer. Euh, Ce sont, ce sont des, des éléments d'architecture. It's very ouais. difficult to explain because these are elements of architecture. Euh, C'est l'architecture d'une ville. Ce sont les portes de la connaissance d'une ville. It's the architecture of a, of, a, of, a, of a city. And those, the eight uh, uh, characters, so to speak, you see on the, on the, on the light boxes, uh, each one pillar, one door to uh, to a city, and they mean each something. Yeah, very intriguing. Mm -hmm. C'est très intriguant. 
Et, euh, mais, alors, la, la dans, dans ce qu'on fabrique, on essaie de faire que les choses soient fondées de manière très sérieuse euh, et souvent sur des mythologies, qu'elles soient africaines, grecques, okay. etc. When we work together, we try to make things very grounded and, uh, and grounded often in uh, mythologies, be them Greek mythology or African mythologies. Et parce que la mythologie, c'est toujours une explication de la vie. Because mythology is an, explication, is an explanation to life. Et, mais on ne cherche pas à, à montrer pour ce qu'on a fait, enfin, les, les bases de notre travail. C'est pour le libérer, au contraire. Mm. Le libérer de toute forme d'idées, de concepts. Euh, et on l'appuie sur, cette, sur cette, ces explications fondamentales de la vie pour éviter d'avoir à expliquer quoi que ce soit à qui que ce soit. Et nous grounds notre travail souvent dans les mythologies, exactement parce que nous ne voulons pas avoir à expliquer quoi que ce soit à quelqu'un. Et si je peux dire quelque chose, juste un petit twist, qui, de mon entraînement et avec Issa, c'est aussi que tout travail qui est là, c'est pour que vous le prenez comme vous voulez. And for you to find your own interpretations, you should actually not believe whatever the artist should be saying about it. This is what I learned. Mm -hmm. Alors, je, je voudrais juste, je peux rajouter quelque chose mm -hmm. qui correspond à aucune question, mm -hmm. euh, mais c'est par rapport à la question que vous avez posée tout à l'heure sur être, être politique, etc., sur mm -hmm. ce que tu as dit sur le corps en bas. Mm -hmm. euh, en, en 1989, à Dakar, il y a eu des grosses émeutes. In, uh, I want to say something about what uh, the, the young woman said about political art and what I said about uh, the body, the corpse in the in the show. In 1989, there were big riots in Dakar. Et euh, euh, un, un, un match de football avait mal tourné en Mauritanie, entre Sénégalais et Mauritaniens. Et un uh, football game was, uh, I mean, ended up badly. Uh, and the game was between Sénégal and Mauritania. Et des Sénégalais avaient été tués en Mauritanie. And a few Senegalese were killed in Mauritania. Et à Dakar, la réplique a été terrible. And uh, in Dakar, the response to it... Et mon marchand de tabac, mm -hmm. mon mort à moi, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a été égorgé mm -hmm. devant la mamie Fleur. C'est mm -hmm. de ça que je voulais parler. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, after a few, a few Senegalese were killed in uh, Mauritania, in Senegal, there was a wave of killings of Mauritanians in uh, over... A few days, and Isa was saying that he's. Mon mon, mon yeah. parent, mm -hmm. mon ami, mm -hmm. uh, mon marchand tabac. Mm -hmm. His uh, his close friends, who was also his uh, tobacco. Celui que Kalidou voyait. Dealer. Daniel le voyait. Mm -hmm. yeah. Corvézi le voyait. Mm -hmm. Salmon. Wani et tous les autres. Mm -hmm. Le temps d'aller à l'atelier, de revenir pour le transporter, il l'avait égorgé. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nous sommes sur Félix Faux. Et uh, Issa a perdu un ami très proche qui a été tué en quelques secondes avant de quitter un restaurant, aller à l'atelier, à l'atelier et revenir. Et euh, plusieurs amis mauritaniens de Issa étaient réfugiés dans son atelier. Et mm -hmm. beaucoup. Mauritanian friends, Issa's friend, Mauritanian friends were found refuge in his studio. Et Issa était devant la porte avec son gun. Mm -hmm. uh. And Issa was in front of the door with a, with a pistol. C'est pour ça que quand il dit mm -hmm. ce sont les Ukrainiens qui doivent s'occuper de l'Ukraine, il faut entendre ça mm -hmm. en, en sachant ça. Mm -hmm. uh. And when I mentioned that it's about Ukrainians to, to deal with the situation in Ukraine, You have to understand, to hear this too, to understand it. 
um, anything? Uh, you come back, really, I know. But there are other people who haven't spoken. And maybe Elvira and then Christine, or you share, whatever. Um, okay. um, je peux poser en français et oui. quelqu'un traduit. Oui. Um, Can you une I'm question pour... Um, je suis fatiguée, je ne peux pas faire tout en même temps. S'il te plaît, prends note, c'est très simple. Prends des notes et euh, tu coupes et tu traduis, et ainsi de suite. Hein? Et c'est une question simple. Euh, donc c'est une question pour Issa, euh, pour revenir à la question de, des artistes engagés, en fait je voulais avoir euh, votre opinion sur la jeune génération d'artistes sénégalais, euh, justement en revenant sur l'exemple des artistes ukrainiens qui doivent, euh, qui doivent être les premiers à, à parler de la situation en Ukraine, par rapport à la situation au Sénégal, est-ce que, est que vous trouvez qu'il y a une jeune génération d'artistes engagés le 23 est un mouvement essentiellement artistique et politique. Euh, Issa, elle va traduire rapidement la question. Le 23, ces jeunes et ces politiques qui vont à la place Soweto refuser à ce qu'un certain vote soit, ce sont des rappeurs, des peintres, des... Oui, oui. Des journalistes. Oui, oui. des journalistes. Uh, the question was, since uh, um, Isa was mentioning that there are engaged or disengaged artists, uh, does he think that there is a new generation of engaged artists in Senegal? And Isa was replying that M23, which is a political movement that was influential in the uh, revolt of uh, two years ago, which managed to, you know, kick out the former president who was trying to run the, uh, a third term, is essentially an artistic mm -hmm. movement made of uh, graffiti <laughs> artists, rappers, musicians, journalists, writers, and so on. Ils ont dit, touchez pas à ma constitution. They said, don't touch my constitution. Ils sont allés devant le Parlement, à la place Soweto, face au musée du fond, c'est-à-dire le musée qu'a élaboré Théodore Monod. And they went to, in front of the Parliament, in front of the IFA Museum, to say that, to, to be vocal and... Uh, Very engaged. Raw Material Company made a whole publication about that. Ils ont mis du temps à donner le nom à Théodore Monod. <laughs> Ils ont mis du temps. Ils ont appelé ça Institut Fondamental. <laughs> oui. And Ifan is called Théodore Monod, who was a, 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 a researcher. Parce qu'il était des nôtres. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elvira. Thank you, Koja, for all your efforts. <laughs> um, uh, basically, my question has been asked also and respond uh, because I wanted to ask not only about the new generation of artists, but also about the legacy of that practice, um, about the impact of uh, Laboratoire Guitar, and, and also about the um, the ethos of Issa's philosophical uh, and political uh, engagement, uh, which I think resides in the space of the culture. And that is, no matter what you do in the car, um, is a reference for anybody that wants to engage with art, with political activism through art um, in that city and in the country. I wanted to um, reflect on that in relation, oh sorry. I cannot do it. Are you, tu vas prendre ça? Oui. Okay. okay. Donc, um, elle veut parler de l'impact de Agile Art et um, parler de l'éthique de votre engagement politique. Et vous êtes une référence pour beaucoup d'activistes aujourd'hui. Est-ce qu'il y a une, uh, un héritage? 
euh, de, de ta pratique d'Agita par rapport à tes artistes, à une plus jeune génération euh, Oui. Yes. Parce qu'ils nous aiment et nous les aimons. Because they, they like us and we like them. Continue your question. Well, I, I wanted to say that in relation, particularly in relation to some of the videos that one can see here in this space, in which there is a very poetic uh, narrative between Issa representing a generation and these other young men that are engaged in a sort of sometimes clash, but also I think both uh, it's a, something violent, but also elements of protections within it. And I wanted for the two of you to talk about those videos in particular. Uh -huh. um, Elvira demande à Jean-Michel, en fait, à vous deux, à deux. de parler des, de la, toute la série des, des vidéos qu'on voit ici. Euh, pas ceux qui sont en bas, ceux qu'on voit en haut, où on voit effectivement une sorte de transmission entre les générations dans le narratif visuel de, des œuvres. Mm -hmm. um. Déjà, moi, je pense que la transmission de génération doit être, se faire dans le conflit. Euh, et, et tant qu'il n'y aura pas de jeunes artistes pour dire qu'on est des vieux cons, euh, ils ne seront pas tellement en bonne santé. Je pense que la legacy ou la transmission entre les générations always has to be in a conflict and as long as there are no young artists who's telling them that they are old fools, there won't be any transmission. Ce sera que bien fait s'ils opèrent une remise en cause. Mm -hmm. And it would be question. good to, to question that, you know. But so far, everybody is very veneering, yeah. That's true. Donc c'est peut-être notre échec. C'est un peu comme ça. C'est sur ce plan-là, d'ailleurs, qui tarde. Mm -hmm. Qui tarde à être irrévérencié. Ils ne sont pas là pour être disrespectifs. Même si ils sont encouragés et taught à être disrespectifs. Et c'est fait tard. Et c'est un peu de temps. So thank you very much for your piece. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you for all your questions. And just to say that um, Elvira Dangi Ose, who's here today, will be speaking with um, TJ Demos on the 26th of June about Laboratoire Ajit Art, and also about contemporary African collectives. So please do try and come along to that. Thank you.